So, yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me here. For me, it's a strange feeling because last time I was here, it was 10 years ago. I was checking that students are not cheating or writing their, their I don't know, some tests or something. Because I tried to do PhD here, but I, but I fell badly. Uh, yeah, today's topic will be Log to Arbac, which is my toy project. Uh, yeah, we will learn something about it. Before I dive into the topic, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Irka Kremzer. I used to work for Red Hat for seven and a half years, actually. I still do recognize some familiar faces in the audience. I also work for Oracle, APSA Group, and actually starting yesterday, I start working at JSform.io. Uh, this is what I like. I like 3D printing. On the top right segment, this is actually Grafana dashboard for, for my printer, where I can monitor the temperatures and whatnot. These are the 3D printed chess. What I also like is doing road trips with my family. These are some of the road trips we've done. Last one is uh, two months old from, uh, from Seattle to New York. It was real fun. And I also like to hack on Kubernetes operators. Actually, our previous talk was about such an operator, so it was a great segue for my talk. These are some of the operators I've created. Fun fact is that uh, half of them is written in something that's not Golang. Uh, this is Java-based ones. And like the most famous one is probably the KAGB, which was accepted to CNCF sandbox. But I'm only maintainer there. I haven't found it. So this day, uh, today, I'm going to talk something about this log to RBAC operator. So yeah, let's first let's talk about Kubernetes in general. Like to give you some motivation for the tool, uh, try to imagine that you are a developer. I think it's gonna be easy for you to do. That you are working on operator on Kubernetes, but basically on any uh, cloud native application that uh, has a Kubernetes client in it and calls the Kubernetes API. If you do that, you end up in a situation that when you add a features, uh, you also need to tweak your airbag rules. But the problem with it is that it's a different language, different paradigm. You're coding your operator in some uh, Golang or Java or some like, imperative paradigm style. But then you have to switch your mind to, to YAMLs and do like, decoratively to, to, to tweak your RBAC to allow your application to do its thing. So it's, uh, yeah, uh, you have to switch all the time. And what people end up to do, or at least what I, what I end up to do, is basically say, I, I don't care about the RBACs. I just give my application cluster admin and do the security like eventually, right? But this is a bad thing to do because it may, you basically never uh, do, it, uh, do it in the future. And it opens like huge uh, potential risk for your cluster because if there is a cluster admin uh, role, uh, these days you've got this, all these various attacks through supply and chase uh, to software where if somebody attacks your application and um, says, I don't know, like, it will, it will have like full cluster admins basically and do whatever we do cluster. So, and another use case for, for the application is given you have a black box uh, container you found on the internet and you want to make it run, but you don't have any YAML manifest for that. I, I did that many times. Well, so you basically end up in a, some errors where it's saying, hey, you can't, uh, you can start your application because it wants to list a pod, but you don't, have, you don't have such a right. So that's another use case I'm trying to solve. And before diving into the topic, really, I will have some, like one slide about what RBAC actually is for, for Kubernetes. So we have basically this model that you've got service account, which is tied to a, to a pod uh, through something, and the service account has a role. And this, is the, this, this um, relationship is done through object called role binding in case of role or cluster role binding in case of cluster role. What the role is, it contains a set of uh, rights, so right or, or rules, and rule is a verb and object. So for instance, there are examples like you can list pods or uh, watch deployments or star secrets that start represents all the verbs and it can go, be also on the object place. So this is basically the same situation in, in the diagram. There's also like more compli complicated concepts like aggregated roles, and you can tie the role to user or group. But let's abstract it from, from it. Uh, what's important that these rules and these objects are persisted in Kubernetes in YAMLs and other story in LCD database. And this is, they are cumbersome to write. So I made an observation that most of the 
current Kubernetes clients have st st uh, relatively stable error messages. <laughs> it's structured. So for instance, if you are using Golang client or JavaScript client or Python client or Java client, these messages, when it comes to our bug, will be relatively uh, similar. So wouldn't it be nice to have a tool that would basically scan your application during runtime and give you these RBACs? It would, right? So that's, that's what the log to RBAC does. <laughs> and it's in, inspired by, by the audit to allow logic. You may know it because there are a lot of editors. It's a tool for SE Linux where it basically was able to turn a breakage of a rule to a, to a policy, to a, to a, to a rule. <laughs> so I'm doing the same, but doing it in a runtime. I'm, I'm basically running this operator next to your application, and it scans the logs from the application. And if there is a breakage of RBAC, it will capture this event and turn it to a, to a role. I also got a kubectl plugin, but talk is cheap. I've got a demo prepared, but not sure if it's really visible, so let me. Yeah, well, I have to zoom a lot. So I will start the cluster, because I, nothing is running currently. Okay, cluster has been started, so, so it's really uh, short, uh, faster. So I will deploy an operator for Prometheus, which is a upstream famous operator for Prometheus, and, but without any RBAC rules, so it's gonna not work. So let me do it. I can show the manifest. Yeah, so it's just a deployment, one deployment, uh, no RBAC rules, I've got nothing in my sleeves. So if I deploy this thing, all right, it's, it assumes a namespace called monitoring, so let me create namespace monitoring, create, and do the same again. So it has created a deployment, but no pods are actually running, so let me check, let's check what's happening. Right, I don't have a service account created because it was only a deployment, so I also has to create, have to create a service account. And this is actually, operator can create the service account for you, but I want to demonstrate that this application is not running correctly without the RBAC. So if I list all the pods, I, think it's, I should make the font bigger a bit. Uh, yeah, this is the, so it's currently starting. If I show you the logs from it. Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of uh, error messages. And basically the common topic is something like, hey, this cluster, the service account with this name, we just created service account called Prometheus operator, cannot list Prometheus is in API group, blah, blah, blah. And this is, this is the stable log messages coming from RBAC breakage. So now I'm gonna install the operator that's gonna scan these log messages and turn this uh, errors into uh, rules. To do that, I've got a kubectl plugin. So it's called kubectl log to operator. Uh, sorry, log to RBAC. And you can install it actually from, uh, from using crew. So if you do something like do crew install and this guy, it will install, install the, this subcommand to kubectl. So, so that you can, you can run it and it will create, uh, it will open this interactive UI for, for working with the operator. One of the options is to ability to deploy it. So let me first deploy it. So it deploys the operator itself and the custom resources. If I list the pods, I can see it running almost. Still almost. Yeah, it's running. So let me now demonstrate how it works. In this, in this section, I will be watching for our ends. These are the custom resources for our operator. It's a short version. The long, was, long one is called RBAC negotiation. That's what I call it, the process of negotiation with the RBAC. So currently there are no such, a, such a resources in our cluster. And here I will be watching, by watching I mean like very clear running the commands that's describing a cluster role called new Prometheus operator role. 
and there is no such a role at the moment. But if I, so, if I run it, it says, "Hey, nothing, nothing has been found." But if I request the negotiation process, it will create the role for us, and it will be trying to populate the role with the rules. To do that, I can use the plugin again, and there is a uh, not deploy. I'm sorry, it should be negotiate. Here it asks for a namespace, so our Prometheus operator was deployed in a monitoring namespace. Now it asks for deployment uh, or type of a resource because it can work for deployments, replica says, demon sends, and yada yada. So it was a deployment and name of the of the deployment. And here we can see actually the shape or the, how the custom resource looks like. So this is a very very simple one, but you can also specify in case of multi if you have multiple. Thank you. Multiple containers in your pod, you can specify which container you are trying to scan, but also other things. So if I run it, it's great. Yeah, now you can see that it has created the resource, uh, resource RBAC negotiation. I will take it. Yeah. And it, ha it has added one entry at the moment, and this is the role. And it, it says, like, hey, now the operator can list, and it's our measure configs. And what the operator does, it actually in each iteration, it uh, restarts the pod and starts the application again. And at the end one time, it takes only one, one rule and adds it to a role. By default, it's waiting 20 seconds because it's, uh, in general, it's hard to guess how application takes to start, right? But so, so I choose number 20, but it's configurable, and, but it's low, right? And I know that the application starts much faster because it's written in Go. So I can tweak this number to some something shorter, and increase this pro, uh, speed up this process. So let me actually stop it here and do it right now. So I've prepared make file task or target uh, reset and speed up. <laughs> if I provide dash n to make file targets, it will just print it and not run it. So this is what it what it will do when I run it. It will delete our original. RBAC negotiation uh, resource that's responsible for the process, or delete the cluster role, cluster role binding, and change the deployment of our operator to give it different environment variable that says, hey, sync the syncs after two seconds. By default, it was 20. So if I do it without the N, it will just run it. And now, operator should be, I've got to sleep ten, five seconds there because it takes some time to deploy. So operator should be should be running, and now if we're lucky, the process should be relatively fast. Sometimes it can miss the event, and it, uh, uh, if it miss, if it misses the event, it goes to a different iteration and then should be fast. But yeah, so now it should yeah you can see that it's like tw uh, two or three seconds for each for each rule, which is kind of good because if you imagine that you can plug into your uh, CI CD systems, you can basically run it all over again with your, together with your end-to-end uh, -end tests. So that's that sums up the demo. And yeah, so implications, I've j just already mentioned it. So yeah, it's, uh, it assumes that you basically are using the application uh, together with the operator because what I've just dis uh, shown was just a startup, right? I just Start the operator, but I haven't actually done anything useful with the operator. Uh, <laughs> so if I yeah, switch back, it says like hey, there are like 14. There should be I think 14 rules or something. But at the end, it will just verify and edit, edit the rules just for the startup. But what I want to achieve is uh, if you run your application uh, together with end-to-end -end tests, basically explore all the possible code paths in your in your application together with our back. Um, Look to RBAC operator, you should be sure that the role that ends up from this process is tailored specifically for your application. It's not like um, the rights are not bigger or smaller than the application, but it's perfectly for you. But also, it can, it can notify you that you, like imagine you're developing an operator and you remove some feature, and <laughs> I'm pretty sure that people tend to forget to remove also the RBAC rule. But if you have such a tool that uh, syncs basically the declarative rules in YAML with the imperative style in, in Golang, it can be helpful. 
I have also an, an idea of static dynamic analysis, or sorry, static versus dynamic analysis, because what I do is basically dynamic analysis. I run the application and do something with it. But it can be also done by just exploring the code, like, you know, building the ASTs, and basically trying to figure out what the application does. But this way, it would be language, language dependent. Um, you know, it, you have to do it for Golang, for Java, for Python. But this lock to RBAC thing works for all of them, for free. Yeah, that's it. And thank you for for going. And this is there are links for the deck and repo. QR code doesn't work. <laughs> hey, uh, so I have several questions. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, like as you mentioned, this behaves like audit, audit to, uh, to LO, even though I see that this acts immediately. Is there an option to do it just like with audit to LO, that like to generate something which we decide afterwards to apply or not? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, there, but there is a tool that can do that. Uh, it takes different approach. It's basically, it's very similar to my, my tool. It um, takes the logs from the, I think it's not admission controller, but there is a way to run your API server uh, Kubernetes an option to basically uh, audit all the auth uh, requests to, to your APIs, and it will create an audit log. So this, there is an existing tool that takes this audit log and creates those RBAC rules based on this audit log. The, uh, yeah, the, the problem with that is it's not like continuous process, it's just one pass thing. So, yeah, b both can work in different environments. Yeah, also the other thing is that, uh, like, do I understand well that, like, it always acts how the application acts? So, like, I mean, in case the developers, the QA, whoever did not think about some action when applying this thing, then it would just allow some things in the middle of the run? Yeah, yeah, you're right. It, it, with Grimm's power comes great responsibility. It's like giving sudo to your application. And you are right. Uh, there, it does work when, uh, during the time when the uh, custom resource is present in the cluster. When you remove it, it stops working for the application. And I introduced also a feature where you can pause the, the process. So the, this, um, this I, I actually, sorry, I don't have the custom resource example on my slides, but there is a in spec, under spec, you have a post uh, flag, and you can say post true, and in that case, it will be switched. Those events from this uh, custom resource will be switched, and the RBAC negotiation will be paused in, in quotes. Okay, thank you. Thank you.